So let's examine radical addition reactions to alkynes. And let's begin with our initiation step. So we have a peroxide and we add energy. This energy is used to cleave the relatively weak oxygen-oxygen bond, forming the following two radicals. We use one of these radicals and we react it with an HBr molecule and we form an alcohol as well as our chain carrying bromide radical. Now in the second step, in the propagation step, we take this chain carrying radical and we react it with our alkyne molecule shown here. Now the question remains, onto which carbon atom will this chain carrying atom add on to? Will it add on to this carbon forming the following intermediate or will it form this intermediate where the bromide radical adds on to this carbon? To answer that question we have to resolve which one of these is the more stable intermediate. The answer is this one. Why? Well because if we look at this carbon where we have the single electron on the carbon, this carbon can interact with one of the carbon H bonds on the adjacent carbon. So this single electron interacts with one of the CH bonds forming hyperconjugation, a relatively stabilizing effect. On the other hand, we don't have that same hyperconjugation effect on this intermediate because there are no adjacent carbon H bonds next to this carbon. So there is no relative uh, stabilizing effect. So this is, the more inter this is the more stable intermediate. In fact, this is the one that will form. So now in the second propagation step, we have another HBr molecule interacting with this intermediate. So this electron interacts with one of the electrons next to the H, abstracting that H. And so now this H can either go onto this side forming the trans or onto this side forming the cis. So now we have cis-trans isomers formed. Now, in fact, this radical reaction can continue because, remember, we can add our radical addition to alkynes as well as to alkenes. So let's choose any one of these alkenes. Let's say we choose cis. So here we have the cis molecule. And let's add another chain radical bromide. So here we have the bromide radical along with our cis molecule. So, once again, this electron can either add onto this carbon or onto this carbon, forming either the vicinal or the geminal dihalide. Now, which one of these will be formed and why? Well, it turns out that this is the one that predominates. Why is it that this predominates and not this? The answer lies in resonance stabilization. If we take this vicinal, shown here, what happens is one of the electrons on the bromide can interact with this electron forming the following resonance stabilized uh, form, forming this double bond. In other words, what happens is this single electron forms a double bond with uh, between this carbon and this bromide shown here. Now this resonance stabilizing effect is not present in the geminal and that's why this is the one that does not predominate in our final product. 